So let's talk about what you think about yourself and how do you think about yourself. These are notions of self-concept, self-identity, and social identity. So self-concept or self-identity, those terms are used interchangeably. It's, it's defined as the sum of an individual's knowledge and understanding of self. Okay, so that's a little bit different than self-consciousness, which is the awareness of oneself. So you know who you are with self-consciousness, but self-concept or identity talks about specific individual uh, traits that you think you might have. So self-concept includes things like physical, psychological, and social attributes that you attribute to yourself. So individuals have beliefs about themselves, and, and this is a term that you'll need to know called self-schema. Okay, so these are, these are representations that you have of yourself based on those different properties of physical, psychological, or social attributes. So um, self-concept can be split into two broad bins. So the first being personal identity. And this is your own, um, one's own sense of personal attributes. So do you think you're smart? Do you think you're funny? Do you think you're athletic? So you're now attributing um, specific attributes to yourself versus social identity, which is social definitions of who you are. So what is your gender, race, religion? What job do you have? These things define your social self versus the personal identity is more specific to your personal attributes. Now, let's take a look at different aspects of identity. And, and I know we love acronyms, and this is going to really help you study, but we use the acronym of addressing. And we're going to go through each letter and what it stands for, and that'll help you kind of understand and memorize all the things that you need to know for, for the MCAT. So one of the first things that will help identify you are things like your age. So, you know, are you really, really young? Are you really, really elderly? Or are you just, are you just in the middle? Disability status, religion, ethnicity or race, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status. And this, this refers to sort of where, where do you fall in the, in the ladder of society? You know, are you a blue collar worker with minimal education? Are you somewhere in the middle? Are you highly educated? Are you professional? Are you a little bit more affluent? So these, these things we call socioeconomic status, and they, they play a huge role in a lot of different variables that we'll talk about uh, in this section and others. Indigenous background, na uh, na uh, national of origin or nationality, um, gender. These all have a key role in helping describe and define your identity. So what we have here is a, a summary table we're going to go through, and it's going to look at the different, um, the different points that we just brought up for the addressing framework. And we're going to look at the groups in this example that have power versus those who have less power for that specific identifier. So these are sort of generalizations, and they're not meant to stereotype, but they're meant to help um, at least identify the, the broad range that you can have within each of these characteristics. So for example, adults tend to have more power in terms of identity versus young children, even adolescents, and even elders. Okay, So it's that middle group of let's say roughly you know, 30 to, to 60 would be uh, more powerful than young children, adolescents, or the elderly. Um, temporarily able body versus persons with di uh, disabilities. We say temporarily because at some point, um, you know, you're going to transition to becoming, um, I don't want to say disabled, but have some disabilities. Religion, Christians versus Jews, Muslims, and other non-Christians, which are uh, and a lot of situations identified as visible minorities in terms of religion. And, and this is probably Eurocentric or uh, US-centric. US so that's why some of these might not align with based on where you're watching this. Ethnicity and race. So you're American versus people of color. Heterosexuals versus gay men, lesbians, and bisexuals. Socioeconomic status. Owning, um, owning a middle, being within the middle class and having the education, having a good job versus being poor and being within the working class. Being non-native versus being native. Being U.S. born versus an immigrant or refugee. Being male versus females, transgender, intersex. So I went kind of quickly because I don't need you to sort of memorize this. This is just to highlight the fact that based on these characteristics, you can have those who kind of fall higher up in terms of power versus those who are lower on the scale. And this is going to be very individual. It's going to be very regional specific. Where are you based? What country are you in? What's your, what's your uh, cultural community look like? Right now we were going more from the, from the U.S. standpoint, uh, but you can see how there is this difference. <music>